Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on Bite Frost. Uh, since my last edit, they have released. A, there's been a new firmware update out. Um, so and I've I've updated all my Bite Frost system, and it's a bit of a minor update, but it definitely fixes some of the things that were that needed to be fixed pretty quickly, uh, namely being the DVR only recording at 1080. Uh, 30 frames a second. Um, I've tested the output from the HDMI of the uh, Bite Frost with a capture card and it's definitely putting out um, 720p 50 frames a second. Um, I've also had it confirmed that Fat Shark HDO goggles um, the screens run at 60Hz refresh rate so they're more than capable of running uh, of showing you the 50 frames a second in the goggles. So that's nice. So that just uh, that, that just means that we've now got much better footage, in my opinion, to show people. The extra frame rate, it really does make a big difference. Um, for, for me, coming to FPV from a gaming background, uh, FPS and latency are pretty much uh, the two main things you, you want to worry about. Um, you can play a computer game with seriously low graphics but if you've got a nice high frame rate and low latency um, you can play it really well so uh, having the most amazing best looking image really isn't the most important thing to everyone especially for people running a GoPro and doing freestyle I mean it does improve the experience flying with nicer uh, with a nicer FPV feed but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter that much as long as you can see the gaps that you want to hit and you can still do all the things you want to do it just improves the uh, general experience but when it comes to racing uh, where it's competitive and you're going as fast as you possibly can and you're on the absolute edge pushing it latency 20 milliseconds difference is definitely going to make a difference. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to give you an advantage over other pilots for sure. Having 50 frames a second uh, into your goggles at 720p is going to be far superior than having um, 480p at 25 frames or 30 frames a second depending on if you run PAL or NTSC. Now all the top pilots especially all the ones that I, what I've seen in the UK this year as I've been attending some of the national events all the, all the top pilots here in the UK they're all running all apart from one Gary Kent they're all running NTSC now that is just it's a, it's a worse quality image than PAL but it's higher frame rate it's 30 FPS over 25 FPS so they're taking the higher frame rate with the worse image quality over um, better image quality and lower frame rate because the frame rate it really does help a lot uh, with racing when you're on the edge of racing so now obviously the DJI unit claims to put 120 frames a second into your, into, your, into the goggles whether that's actually 120 hertz refresh rate of the screen and it's actually only getting 60 frames a second I wouldn't be able to confirm um, I've heard that apparently DJI do actually claim that it is sending 120 different frames per second into the goggles but it does only record 60 FPS in the DVR for whatever reason so <clears throat> but either way the DJI unit is it's just as a frame designer I've, 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 it's, it's just like they've looked at what we fly and gone hmm well it'll be alright it'll, it'll kind of fit in there and everyone's just having to bodge their frames together to try and make it work I've seen some pretty decent ones but it's going to be a while before anybody actually rele releases a decent frame that has been tested thoroughly I mean my frames usually take over a year to develop so Without, uh, I'll only be able to modify one of my current frames, or, uh, but actually potentially one that I've already been working on, it might work. So <laughs> you have to stay tuned for a DJI uh, freestyle quad. But for racing, it's just it's going to be pretty tough to make a DJI quad work for racing. However, <laughs> the other thing when it comes to racing is that 
the qu these uh, HD quads, DJI and the Bifrost, they're both using a much more bandwidth of the of the frequency that we can fly in uh, for the video, for the 5.8 band. So they're effectively using two channels instead of one to get this higher definition footage. Um, that's obviously going to cause some issues um, when trying to race alongside analog. They're either going to have separate heats for anyone running HD, but then what happens when you get to the finals and you it's <laughs> you've got you've got to find a way for HD and analog to work together, um, and that's where I think Fat Shark is definitely going to excel. It's not out yet, so it can all be tweaked. They the only thing that Fat Shack care about is you like usability in the FPV scene. They've been in it longer than I have. I've been flying for four years, but they've always been like one of the market leaders. And having to having actually spoken to Greg, uh, the owner of Fat Shark now, you can tell that he's he's dedicated. He want it's not oh DJI has come out and I need to release something quickly. Um, he's doing his own thing as he always has and he he's a pilot himself I mean he he wants to make FPV better so the fact that you should all be like you should all be really happy that there's a bit of competition because it's definitely making him work harder to release a better quality product and already there's there's loads of pros and cons for each system uh, my conclusion right now is that the Bite Frost is going to be better for racing and the DJI system will be better for freestyle. Just to uh, touch on the uh, the screen, uh, so it does fit inside these transformer goggles but it was never advertised as a feature of it from the start. They've only just uh, added in the up firmware update the ability to flip the screen so that you could actually use those um, the goggles box that you put the screen into so it was never actually in their mind to use that in the first place pretty sure the main reason for that is because the screen has 40 milliseconds latency compared to the HDMI output so the VRX of the Bite Frost receives the video signal splits it one of those splits goes out the HDMI into your goggles, One, the other split goes into the DVR, records the DVR, spits it out the other end of the DVR, overlays OSD information that you only see on the screen and alongside the video. Um, that processing adds 40 milliseconds to the screen. So yeah, if you're just floating around doing a bit of freestyle and if you don't notice say you can fly a run cam split and not notice the latency then yeah flying from the screen you're probably going to be fine but if you're if you're if you're racing or like flying fast trying to hit tight gaps getting into trouble a lot and you need to get out you need to get out of trouble quickly you're probably going to struggle a bit to fly from the screen i've managed to when i did the goggle thing but it did feel really weird initially i thought it was uh just the strange experience of flying from a screen for the first time in a long time um, but it's probably more likely that added 40 milliseconds latency because uh, yeah it was a bit weird so uh, so I touched on earlier that I have had it confirmed that the H uh, HDO, Fat Shark HDO goggles um, are, do have a 60 hertz refresh rate so they're fully capable of displaying um, the bite frost image that's not entirely accurate because the Bifrost, not only is it putting out a 720p, it's 720p widescreen. So it's 12, I'm probably going to say 1280 by 720. I'll put something here if I've got that wrong. Um, so it's a widescreen image as opposed to the DJI system, which is actually putting out a 4.3 image. And then when you view it in 16.9, it crops it down. So you lose a load of the field of view. Um, so the Bifrost unit, it putting out a widescreen image. Um, in 720p. Now, no Fat Shark goggles do widescreen 720p. The HDOs are the only ones that do 720, um, but they're not designed to run 16.9 at 720. 
so when you put 16.9 on the output, it literally just squashes it down into 4.3. Um, there's no, it can't do any scaling, the goggles don't do any scaling because that also brings in latency. So if you've got any like cheap goggles that automatically scales, um, they've got more latency than Fat Sharks because they'll have an extra chip to do all the processing. So any form of processing that you do is going to be adding latency, which is why I can, I really do think that the DJI system must have more latency than the bite frost system but if it ever if it stops raining for more than two or three days and the grass can dry out just a little bit i will risk racing on grass with my uh, bite frost system but at the moment all i've been able to do is kind of uh, tear it around uh, the quarries because it's dry and it's not so much the quad it's more me and all my gear gets completely soaked when you go and stand in a soaking wet soggy field uh, for a few hours flying so um, yeah <laughs> I'm dedicated but I like to stay warm and dry so uh, nobody's really talking about the LQ um, mode of the bite frost system um, I don't know how many people have really tried it out that that much I tried it with um, I've tried it with the run cam racer HD where you just switch it into LQ mode and the picture was atrocious it was worse than just any any analog camera I've ever used it was worse than all of them worse than any tiny work cheap camera even cheap board cameras from five years ago um, it's just yeah it's like yeah it's not it's not good and Greg himself has agreed that it agreed with me that it's shit and it will likely be dropped from the system on launch because there's just no use for it. You plug in an old analog camera and it's just, <laughs> it's bad. Um, absolutely, yeah, not worth even having it in the system. So just, <laughs> it's only HQ. That's why anybody's gonna buy it, it's just to run high quality. So having this mode, it's just, yeah, don't waste your time on it anymore and just stick, stick, stick to the good stuff, get that going well also had it confirmed that um, the cameras situation of the manufacturers Fat Shark don't make cameras at the end of the day and Greg doesn't have any interest in making cameras so it's down to Runcam, Cadix and maybe Foxia to do what they've always done best and just battle it out, keep copying each other and improving slightly, release a camera every single week and you know within six months we'll have 20 different uh, HD Zero cameras to choose from and you can have sexy low, high latency <laughs> um, cameras or you can have uh, grainy standard definition super low latency uh, images like the Racer HD. I personally I, I, I'm really happy with the system so far I'm not sponsored by either of them I don't give a shit if you buy the DJI system, I don't give a shit if you buy the Fat Shark system. I, I, you know, I, I'm just making this vid these videos because, and I'm doing this testing simply because I knew that unless I did this myself, I wouldn't personally know what the system is like by looking at other people's videos. Now, I'm doing my absolute best to try and put across like every side of the story. Um, I'm trying to answer all the comments. Um, unless it's like <laughs> people are just repeating some of the same stuff now so if I ignore your comment it's usually because 10 other people have already said it and I've replied to them so have a read through the comments before you um, uh, leave one yourself and um, <laughs> check to make sure that there isn't a newer video out because there's still a lot of people watching my like original video with the first flight footage and it's shit. I mean, hopefully you're going to be watching this one because it's got the updated firmware footage, which is coming at you now. Laters.